D-Lo, ay, yeah, clutch. I'm in the clutch, we in the clutch, it's even been clutch. You think that we suck, your dreams are the luck, your ship is just sunk, we turn off a way. Ooh, yeah, see that my face is up in disgust because people talking a mess, but there's nothing to discuss. I'm just being honest, I'm keeping it a bug. Uh huh. We in the clutch! What's going on, clutch? Squat! What up, what up? It's your boy Duck, it's your boy True Billy, it's your boy Ross. And we are in the clutch. Hey, hey yes, sir. Back to you, ladies and gentlemen, with another video, you feel me? Mr. Ballin', man. Top three oh, man. stories that sound fake, bar are a hundred percent real. Part dos, man. Hey, still shaking up over the first one. Hey, I ain't going to lie to you. You guys were enjoying it. Y'all were happy that we were finally checking out some Mr. Ballin. Right. We were actually enjoying it because the, the glass stories was crazy. So we were looking forward to checking out another Mr. Ballin. I think this is going to be hella entertaining. Oh, yeah, for sure. I can't wait to get into it, bro. Run up the likes, man. Let's go, man. Let us know what other ones we need to be checking out next, man. Let's go. Let's do this thing. It's stranger than fiction. And today, we're going to look at three stories that demonstrate Give me a snack, But before man, we get into be today's good. stories, right. if you're a fan <laughs> right. of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right channel because that's all we do. Y'all go we subscribe to him, man. Even five times a week. Pretty cool, uh, so if that's of interest to you, please Late remove night. all the oh. raisins from the like can't button. Can't go to sleep, bitch. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any you can't go to sleep, bitch. Right, oh, yeah. Jeez, these are his type of goals. Those are the perfect ones. Yep. Hey, yeah. Goddamn, I gotta be in the Should studio today. Oh, shit. Yeah. Go to sleep at 10. From 2000 to 2013, Cornelius Mike Anderson miraculously turned his life around. Okay. Growing up in a suburb of St. Louis, Missouri, Mike was a troubled young man that seemed destined for jail time. But something okay. changed for him in the year 2000 when he was 23 years old. Suddenly, he wanted to make the most out of his life. Okay. So he distanced himself from his old friends and he moved to a different suburb so outside of St. Louis called Webster Groves. There, he started a successful construction company. Hmm. He got married, divorced, married again. He had three kids and became the father to a stepchild. Okay. He was very active in his community, volunteering countless hours at his church, as well as becoming a youth football coach. I love Anyone here. that met Mike yeah. after the year 2000 only had wonderful things to say about him. But Mike had a big secret about his past uh -oh. that he was just hoping never saw the light of day. Oh, Back in shit. 1999, when Mike was 23 years old, he robbed a Burger King outside of St. Louis at gunpoint. He was arrested in the year 2000, convicted of armed robbery, and sentenced to 13 years in prison. Shortly after his conviction, he was out on bail pending the outcome of his appeal. But when his appeal was denied in May of 2002, Mike was expecting to go back to jail. And so he asked his lawyer, you know, what are the next steps? Because I'm out on bail. Do I go to the jail? Do, do they come to get me? And his lawyer said, oh no, they'll issue a warrant for your arrest. They will come to your house and they will take you to jail. So Mike got his affairs in order and he waited to go to jail. Oh, no. But no one ever showed up. And so days turned into weeks, turned into years, and Damn. no one ever took Mike to jail. Because it would turn out the state had made a clerical error and they believed Mike was already behind bars oh. when he was actually just at his home. And in July of 2013, at the end of his original 13-year sentence, they went to go release him from prison. Oh. That's when they realized he had never been incarcerated. What? What so kind eight of... U.S. Marshals immediately went to his house oh. and arrested him, and they brought him to jail, and there was this huge public outcry that it was totally unjust that you're arresting him now because right. it's yeah. the state's yeah. fault that yeah. they did exactly. not bring him to jail. It's not Mike's fault. And he wasn't doing nothing. He's just living his life. He he was ready. He's like, all right, well. ready, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. And they all never right. came, so it's like, all right, well, I'm gonna just keep living my life. So if I was a judge, I'm like, okay, I look at your past and stuff. What you doing? What did you do in the last 13 years? Exactly. So? I would yeah, like, be like, like, clearly uh, you you were standing, you a good citizen. Yeah, like, you you turned your life around. Or I make you do like do some community service. Like, do a community like, service along what he was already doing, you know. Right. But, so, yeah. bro, that's. And Mike used that opportunity to become a totally changed man. And so after a number of appeals and this very public petition of people trying to get Mike out of jail, of a judge finally took a closer look at Mike's case. And it would take this judge only 10 minutes to come to the conclusion that Mike was in fact a changed man yeah. and should not have to serve the rest of his sentence. Facts. Good. And so although Mike was held for nine months after being rearrested, he was released and today he is a free man. That's what's up. All right. Well, I mean, it's still nine, nine months, you know, you yeah, messed up. But that's crazy, bro. But at least some some type of judge yeah. with some type of common like, sense was able yeah. to, oh, this is, why is he, see, get him out he of here. He didn't run away, though. He was waiting on him. Yeah, right. he didn't. Yeah. He could have. So, he could have went to a whole other country, well. bro, and been living a whole wow. different life. But, hey, man, that's crazy, bro. Woo. 
Uh -oh. starting off with some. The uh, Trump family were, by all accounts, a normal, hardworking household. 51-year-old Mark Trump and his wife, 53-year-old Kobe Trump, had established a successful red current farm and earth-moving business at their property in Sylvan, which is just outside of Melbourne. Their three adult children, which were 29-year-old Rihanna, 25-year-old Mitchell, and 22-year-old Ella, all lived and worked with them at the farm. But their seemingly ordinary lives would change forever on Monday, August 29th, 2016. That day, without any warning, the family dumped their passports, credit cards, and cell phones on the kitchen table and ran out the front door, leaving it unlocked. They hopped into Ella's car and drove north. 30 kilometers into their journey, and it was discovered that the son, Mitchell, still had his phone. And so the others yelled at him to throw it out the window. And so he did, he chucked his phone out the window. The family drove all day and night until they reached a motel in the New South Wales town of Bathurst, 800 kilometers away God, to the damn. west of Sydney. Damn. The following morning, Mitchell decided he did not want to be a part of whatever it was they were doing. And so he abandoned his family and began heading home. The remaining four family members did not go after Mitchell. Instead they just piled back in the car and drove east to a popular tourist destination called the Genelin Caves. It was there that the two daughters, Rihanna and Ella, decided that they also did not want to be a part of whatever it was they were doing, and so they snuck away from their parents and stole a car and began heading home. The parents, after realizing their daughters had now left, did nothing. They did not go after them. The two sisters drove south to the town of Goulburn, where they called the police to report their parents missing. The story made its way into the media, where the family was initially ridiculed for getting lost in the first place and getting completely separated in an area they should know well. This is their country. It's not a remote area. They were near big established towns the entire time. It just didn't make sense. But when police went to the Trump family farm back in Sylvan and they discovered the front door was unlocked, there were credit cards, mm -hmm. passports, and phones on the table, suddenly it seemed like there was a lot more to this case than met the eye. And so as this strangeness came into focus in the media, people stopped ridiculing the family and began speculating what caused them to suddenly flee their house. Was it something in the water they were drinking? Was there chemicals on the farm that was screwing up their brain? Were they running from someone? Were they in debt? You know, what was it that caused this strange sudden departure? Back in Goldburn, after reporting their parents missing, Rihanna and Ella inexplicably separated at a gas station. Rihanna just climbed in the back of some utility truck, uh, and Ella hopped in the stolen vehicle and started driving home. What? Later that night, Ella would become the first Trump family member to be located by police when she arrived at the farm and police were waiting for her there. Mitchell would arrive back home the following morning after taking a series of trains to get there. Once Mitchell and Ella were reunited, they made a statement to the media outside of the family farm, and as you're looking at them, it's clear they're totally shell-shocked. They don't know what's happened, and they're trying to articulate why their family left in the first place and what they were doing and where they're going and the best they could do was to say well there was a lot of pressure on our family and it was it was building up and these things are just difficult to explain and and I don't really know what we were doing. Mitchell would say that there was a belief that people were after them, there was some paranoia there, but that paranoia was predominantly held by their parents. While Mitchell and Ella were certainly in a state of shock, they did seem mentally stable. The same could not be said for their sister, Rihanna. She was discovered by the driver of the truck she had snuck into after he had driven over an hour away. He had pulled yeah. over to check on something. He had gone around the back and then had the life scared out of him when he oh, saw yeah. Rihanna just sitting there in a what he called catatonic state. She oh, didn't know no. her name. She didn't know where she was. She was just sitting there. Rihanna was taken to the Goldburn Hospital where she was put into their psychiatric unit. As media interest grew, the parents, Mark and Kobe, got back in their car up at the Genelin Caves and drove south towards Melbourne. A day later on Wednesday, the pair had driven 600 kilometers to the Victorian town of Wangaratta, where they too inexplicably separated. What's Kobe turned off? around and started heading north again by means which are still a mystery, and a day later was found 350 kilometers away in the town of Yas in a very agitated state. She was taken to a hospital there, but then transferred to the Goldburn Psychiatric Unit to be with her daughter, Rihanna. Mark stayed in Wangaratta, and he was there for several days, and during his time there, he was spotted by a young couple really aggressively tailgating them and then he was spotted again on another day fleeing from the car he had been driving. Finally on Saturday evening all of the Trump family members were accounted for when Mark was finally discovered sitting next to the road near the Wangaratta airport. He was questioned by police and then assessed by a mental health officer and then was released into the custody of his brother who was a police officer. And as they drove away Mark turned around and flipped off the photographers that had converged on the spot. He later released a more contrite 
rights statement apologizing for the hurt and concern that were caused by these events, and he also paid respect to the police and the volunteers that went out looking for them. After the investigation, the police determined that nobody was chasing this family. They were not in any danger. The family had also not taken any drugs. They were not in debt. They were not involved in any sort of religious yeah. cult. Yeah. And prior to this strange event, the family had no history of mental health issues. After the dust had settled and the Trump family was just back at their farm going about their normal life, every media outlet wanted an interview with them to try to learn more about why this strange thing happened. Right. But yeah. the family said, we're not doing interviews, we're not putting out any more statements, we just want to be left alone. And so as a result, all people could do was theorize. And the leading theory was that the Trump family was suffering from something called folly adieu, which is a French term that means madness for two. And what happens is one person who is delusional Same can thing. pass mm -hmm. that delusion on to other people. Yo, and this really? typically only happens in very close-knit families or in very tight romantic relationships. <laughs> While it's unclear which of the Trumps became psychotic first, doctors say it is clear at some point they were in a cycle of reinforcing each other's delusions if this folly adieu theory is the right one. While the full reasons for why the Trumps went on this strange voyage will probably never be known, the police deemed it a family matter and did not press charges. Damn, that's crazy. These niggas just kept running away, split yeah, up, just... going back home, running away, yeah, split up. Y'all playing Ozark out here in real life? Right. That's ridiculous. Sheesh, bro. Oh, like, that, that, yeah, all right, man. Head in the clouds, number one. In 2007, 35 year old Eva Vizhnirska was a member of the German Vizhnirska. national paragliding team. Over okay. the previous two years, Ava had competed in 10 of the world's biggest paragliding competitions, and she had won six of them, making her the top female paraglider in the world. Okay. So coming into that year, Ava was very motivated to work extra hard to make sure she retained that it, title as world it. champion. On February 24th of that year, Ava was preparing her gear alongside 200 other paragliders on Mount Bora in New South Wales, Australia. This was Ava's last training opportunity before her first major competition competition of that year, which was scheduled for the next week. As they were getting ready to launch, one of the coaches walked in front of the group and made an announcement. He said storm clouds have been spotted to the north, but the forecast was a little bit ambiguous. It wasn't clear if the storm was going to move over their training area or not. So it was up to each of the paragliders if they still wanted to launch that day and risk the bad weather. Ava, who was really eager to get this training flight in, looked at the sky and saw that it was pretty gray, but decided that she was going to do it. Worst case scenario, she would have to cut it short. The rest of the German national team, they didn't want to take the risk, and so they mm -hmm. stayed grounded that day. Ava took a little bit longer preparing her gear, so by the time she was lining up on the cliff, she was only one of a handful of people that remained. Mm -hmm. And so strapped into her glider, she took a good run forward and launched herself up into the air. On the ground, the rest of the German national team followed in a van to track her progress and checked in with her from time to time with their radio. The first part of Ava's journey was incredibly calm. She followed the ridge line from Mount Bora for 12 miles until it ended. At that point, she entered into the skies over the vast savanna. As her GPS and tracking log ticked, tracking her progress, two large thunderstorm clouds appeared in front of her, one larger than the other. The vast majority of the other paragliders that had launched that day had launched ahead of Ava. And so when these clouds appeared, they had already passed that section. And so they didn't need to contend with the storm. As for Ava and the other two people she was with, which was an Austrian team member and a Chinese team member, they had a decision to make. They could either immediately ground their flight to avoid the storm, or they could attempt to dodge it. They chose the latter. They knew it was too dangerous to try to fly underneath these clouds because of something called updraft. At the beginning of storms, warm air is sucked up from the ground uh, up into these clouds, uh, and a paraglider, if they get caught in that, can get sucked up with the air into the storm. And so Ava and the other two paragliders began aggressively flying around the outside of these clouds when all of a sudden the storm completely changed. The big cloud overtook the small cloud, creating this 12 mile wide cumulonimbus cloud what that now all three paragliders were stuck inside of. Any Whoa. updraft is dangerous to a paraglider, but the updraft of a cumulonimbus cloud is famously dangerous because it's extremely powerful and it lasts for over an hour. The Austrian man was able to pull down on one toggle, point his feet, and begin spiraling all the way out of the grasp of this updraft. And he said he turned to look at the other two and he didn't see the Chinese man, but he did see Ava, and she was desperately trying to do what he was doing and spiral down, but she was clearly caught in the updraft and he watched her get pulled up into the black cloud out of view. 
by the time the Austrian man hit the ground, he would say it had become the worst thunderstorm he had ever seen, with huge hail balls hitting the ground all around him. He took one more look up, and he didn't see the Chinese man, he didn't see Ava anywhere, and he took off running for a barn to seek shelter. And when he was there, he pulled out his radio, and he alerted the other teams of this emergency. Inside the cloud, Ava was hurtling up like a rocket. The storm was lifting her at a rate of 60 feet per second. There was nothing she could do to get out of this wind tunnel. Ava knew she was getting pulled towards the storm's eye in its vicious center because of the immense claps of thunder that just kept getting louder and louder, and it also kept getting darker and darker all around her. In fact, it was pitch black, except for the occasional flash of lightning that came very close to electrocuting her. As she desperately tried to keep her glider stable, she was able to place a radio call down to her team on the ground, but all she could say was, I can't see anything before it cut out. And at some point, Ava reached the eye of the storm where it's pitch black, and the temperatures are freezing and hail balls the size of oranges are pelting her left and right. And the updraft kept pulling her higher and higher and higher until she passed out from a lack of oxygen. Oh. At some point, this updraft actually shot her up and out of the cloud. And while this meant Damn. she was out of the storm, she was now in air that was 50 degrees below zero, oh, which meant dear. everything, her face, her gloves, her clothes, the wings of her glider, everything completely froze. And to make matters worse, at the altitude she was at, there was almost no oxygen and she did not have a breathing apparatus. Oh, so by all yeah, accounts, Ava, Ava should be, be dead. dead yeah. But somehow, she didn't die. She just kept floating around above the storm cloud for 45 minutes. What? And then something happened. The ice on one side of the glider broke off, causing it to collapse, throwing her into a deadly free fall. And she's not in control, she's still unconscious. And she starts barreling back towards the ground like gravity has been turned back on again, going straight through the storm all over again. And so through the storm going at 90 feet per second, she clears the storm. And then right after getting out from underneath it, her glider miraculously just opens back up again. And the jerking motion of her suddenly stopping her wow. free fall jolted her awake. And so she's looking around totally confused as she's gradually regaining consciousness. And she's taking stock of where she is. And she's still in the storm cloud, but right at the bottom of it. But luckily the updraft had stopped. And so she was steady and she was able to reach up and grab her toggles and she was able to fly herself down to the ground and crash land and then she curled into a ball grabbed her radio and she called her team when they heard her voice they could not believe she was alive because the other paraglider that got sucked up by the updraft the guy from the chinese national team he unfortunately was struck by lightning and and so they were anticipating finding out that ava had been struck by lightning as well but ava had not just survived when they brought her to the hospital they discovered that virtually nothing was wrong with her she had some pretty bad bruises and cuts from the hail and she had a little bit of frostbite on her face but it was treatable and so the same day she was brought in they discharged her after leaving the hospital Hospital, she and her teammates went back to the launch site so she could collect her gear oh, and when they wow. got there she, she looked bought... at her GPS and the GPS had been tracking her entire flight <laughs> the entire time she was up in that cloud and she showed her teammates what oh. it said and they literally couldn't believe it. The screen showed she had reached an altitude of 32,634 <laughs> feet which to put this <laughs> in perspective the is the same altitude mm-hmm. you fly at Bro, inside of a commercial jet. Yep. So oh, imagine being outside bro. of your plane in the middle of a flight and that's how high she was. Another reference point is she was approximately 4,000 feet higher than the summit of Mount Everest. God no damn. human being. Wait, 4, how the hell feet are you alive? Higher than the summit. God. Bro, I'm sorry, bro. The road. I'm the sorry, bro. Reason, bro. Uh, I, I know bro, some people again, may not believe. All you naysayers out there, bro. I, bro, I'm there's, sorry. There's no way. Four thousand feet right higher than the summit of Mount Everest. That's crazy. What had ever been that high, unprotected, and lived to tell the tale? until Ava. So that's going to do it, guys. If you wow. found the bro, secret in today's to episode, yeah, 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 bro. Oh my God, stamp. bro. And if- the glide. Oh, wow, they actually need a book or something. Yeah. Like, yo. That that could be that a movie crazy. on its own, bro. I'm surprised. That's what I said. Bro, that is... Sandra Bullock. Bro. Yeah, like... Bro, negative um, 40... What you said? Ava God was watching you that day. Like, that is... Re- bro. bro. Ava. Being in a plane, you can see how high you are. Yeah. So a person being up there, you bro. You can't even see how high you are, actually. You just be looking like, man, hey. Bro, that is insane, That's dog. Crazy, bro. No, yeah. no, no oxygen mask, nothing, bro. 
and then being shot down to the so fast and then getting jolted. Bro, away. that that's I'm sorry. To be able that, to grab that, yourself. You that's bro, you can't the bad. odds of that happening. Okay. Her not getting struck by lightning, being up that high, and passing then, out, getting frostbite. Not getting seriously injured where you're able to be discharged the same day you go bro. out. Bro, that's crazy. Bro. I don't it, wow. it, I'm sorry, man. I, I got to believe there's, there's a higher power, bro, because it wasn't yeah. time to go. It, 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 Jesus. Any yeah, it really other wasn't. time, like, that situation, you don't survive that. But that one time, it wasn't her time. Mm-hmm. That's the only well, thing hey, I can hey, say. Hey, hey, it yeah. wasn't her time, bro. Cause Obviously, it wasn't her time. Yeah. Woo. That like, was very, Bro. <sighs> I don't even know. When what I, the when I brave leave. and yet very, I don't want to use the word stupid for, like, you should have just realized that was the, the clouds. That was All I know Jordan, is when but... she landed, I would have been like. I'm stronger than Spider Man, actually. Like, I'm Iceman. Hey, that day, I would have retired. I was like, you know what? Yeah, you know what? Yep. That was a sign. Give me a Hall <laughs> of Fame glider. Uh, yeah, yeah, Hall of Fame glider. I'm a world I'm, champ. I'm truly the GOAT. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. I'm, facts, bro. You No know one can say they've been up Olympic without, team, y'all give me metal. without yeah. a, a apparatus to breathe. Right. They've been 4,000 yeah. miles higher than the summit of Mount I'll Everest. I call her the immortal goat. Yeah, she's Here's the, the goat. immortal goat, bro. The the immortal, I, I, immortal glider. That, that that is, she, yep. she can write a book. She can do documentary. I'm sure they probably yeah. have it, man, because that's... Why am I just not hearing about these? Bro, man? right? Crazy. Sheesh, that's crazy, oh, you bro. Probably, well, it was on TV one day. You just walking by. Yeah, yeah. maybe, man. Yeah. That, that, it was that, back in 07, yeah. No telling yeah. what That was impressive, bro. This, nah, this sure. was... Hey, we love Another these. Another great one, man. We love these, man. And these. if you guys love them, you mm-hmm. know what to do, man. Run up the likes. Let us know if y'all want us to do continue this series, man. Uh, we're enjoying them, man. It's a dope way to kind of sit back. Man, we need to have some snacks here next time. Yeah, yeah. yeah next yeah, time. Man. This is... Definitely a Pop snacking one. around time to watch these. For sure, this, man. Woo! That yeah. last one. God damn. Oh, oh yes. crazy. <laughs> but uh, we <laughs> look God, man. Nothing but yeah. the man. Let's well, right. to the other man that got caught in yeah, life. Yeah, that, that sucks, man. bro. That's Jeez. crazy. But again, man, we'll catch y'all in the next video, man. Again, happy Black History Month. Keep on supporting us, man. We love you guys. Take it easy. Till next time. Already. This is from Houston. If you got a problem, then we got the solutions. And there's no illusion. I made this shit happen. I'm living life lucid. I'm switching my strategies. Now they hate on me because I'm causing casualties. But why are they after me? Deep inside, they know they can't handle half of me.